If you were looking for another reason to hate bats, the silence will fill your belly full of reasons. In this video on Nerd Explains, I'll give you a quick and dirty explanation of the movie, a breakdown of the Vesps, and show you why you might not survive. And to not end things on a dark gruesome note, I'll also tell you how to beat the Vesps. The Silence is a mix between A Quiet Place, Piranha, and Aliens. The intro contains disturbing imagery of humans being violent assholes, as well as circle of life type footage, which suggests we are about to get what's coming. A group of overzealous cave diving researchers accidentally busted open an entrance to a cave full of giant fanged meat-eating bats. As you can imagine, the researchers were not able to do much more research after that. The Vesps, as they called them, started flying across the nation consuming anyone that made noise. Major cities were effectively meat markets for the Vesps. So Stanley Tucci and his family hopped in the minivan and went off-roading while plebs sheltered in place and sat in traffic. Like any movie where silence is golden, we have a convenient deaf protagonist and her family that all know sign language. They eventually make it out of the city without getting the meat picked off their bones and their bellies filled with baby bat eggs. They come across some religious zealots that they didn't take seriously soon enough. In an effort to abduct Tucci's daughter, the cult sent Generation Z terrorists with an iPhone suicide vest to infiltrate the family's home and set off sound bombs which would attract the Vesps. It almost works, but Tucci's mother-in-law tackles the thugs while screaming, causing them all to be slaughtered by the Vesps. Tucci and co ambush the cult with sickles, ending them swiftly. Allie, using the internet, finds out a critical weakness of the Vesps. They don't like the cold. So they all moved to Canada so Allie could live out her dreams as a post-apocalyptic Katniss bow hunting roided up bats with her boyfriend. What are the Vesps? The name given to these creatures, Vesps, is named after Avispa, the Spanish word for wasp, which doesn't really do them any justice. They aren't like wasps at all, except for how they swarm their prey with overwhelming numbers. They are cave-dwelling bat-like carnivores capable of winged flight. They aren't aliens or monsters like in a quiet place. These creatures were found in an uncharted subterranean cave system in North America, where they have been surviving for millions of years. They probably fed off of fish in subterranean rivers, as they don't come across as the type that gets satisfied by insects. <laughs> They do seem to be a kind of pterosaur, which is a flying reptile from the Jurassic period. They most closely resemble the Dimorphodon, in my uninformed opinion. Since caves obviously don't have light, this led to them becoming blind, and dare I say it, they hunt by sound instead. I really hate that they hunt by sound. This makes it seem like they hunt as if they were a blindfolded human with a gun drunkenly shooting at where they think they heard a deer roaming while bumping into rocks and trees. It's not like that at all. Realistically, the Vesps would actually be using echolocation to navigate their environment, which basically means they wouldn't be blind, and they could see their environment as well as their prey, which is you. In the movie though, they are completely blind. I wouldn't say their hearing is outstanding or anything. I mean, an owl can hear rodents under two feet of snow, but the Vesps can't hear someone casually walking around right in front of them. They have thin, translucent skin, which is an adaptation from living in caves that receive no ultraviolet radiation. So they will most likely gravitate towards shaded areas to avoid getting burned. Their lack of fur makes them vulnerable to the colder weather. And finally, they are really dumb. Like fly into a wood chipper because it made sounds and they think all sounds are food type dumb. Maybe let's stop for a second to consider why we might not survive a million strong swarm of giant flying piranhas swirling above us. A lot of the danger comes from the people around you, and if not, it probably means you are the one causing the danger. What the hell does that mean, don't make noise? Dude, it means keep your mouth hole shut and don't say stupid things like that. People who scream and squeal at anything that happens suddenly. Put your phones on silent, okay? What's happening? I don't know. Exploring the 
cave. Yeah, nobody else did that. So if one person nearby forgot to use silent mode, it's game over. But we're supposed to just stay here and, and stay silent. Right. And the cities are the worst place to be. Aren't they? Uh, except that they don't attack cities. They attack individual people that make noise. If you stayed indoors and didn't make any noise, you'd be relatively safe. Immediately hopping into your truck and driving into traffic with everyone panicking is a significantly worse idea. Thousands of people are getting eaten alive everywhere in the city and you go to the nearest gas station to top off, grab Slurpees, and tell stories about Uncle Joey. When you're riding with Uncle Glenn, so he's a tough guy in times like this. Sound is death, and people are driving around honking and screaming and popping shotguns off. Shut the shotgun! Shut she can't hear you! Okay, okay, don't shoot. What do you want? Just shut up! Okay, all right. Other people are the second biggest danger in this situation. Don't leave me here, man. Please, those, those things are gonna catch up to me. Maybe you should have thought about that earlier before being a dick. If you do decide to make a run for the border, wait until you're out of the city to get gas. Even 30 miles out of the city is much safer. Again, this is why trying to drive out of the city is problematic. You have creatures that are slaughtering anybody that makes sound, and these idiots are in their cars honking. Not to mention the emergency vehicles that also didn't turn off their siren. <coughs> if your loved one has emphysema, you're gonna have to figure something else out. Traveling in the open with them is suicide. trying to bring your dog with you. I have a dog too, but Mr. Tucci made the right call. It's either that or getting picked clean down to the bones. There's a huge difference in how I'd go about it though. I definitely would not send my dog out to get ripped apart by those creatures. If you decided to go off the grid or go on a fishing trip or something and didn't get the warning that all this was happening, well, you'd probably end up like this lady. You'll have to deal with babies the same way as dogs. If you can't find a way to keep them quiet or soundproof the area, you're gonna have to take them out. Take him out. Hmm? Take him out. Take him out? Like for drinks? No, no, no. Take him out. Take out. No, uh, take him out. If you do happen to get noticed and bitten and you start panicking and yelping, Well, that pretty much seals your fate. Any chance of you eliminating the attacking creature quietly and getting away is over. You can't effectively fight the Vesps without drawing more attention to yourself. And they always travel in packs or swarms of hundreds or thousands of them. Never underestimate the people that survive the initial onslaught of any apocalypse. They're usually cunning, resourceful, and persistent. Stanley Tucci brushing off and ignoring this guy is a huge mistake that the grandma ends up paying for later. Dad? What is it? It's a little girl. Not recognizing obvious traps. How many movies do you need to see before you realize that a damsel in distress is the most obvious ploy in the book? So we know what not to do in this situation. But what are the ways that we can beat the Vesps? Let's do this two ways. First, let's look at what you could do if you were in this situation. Then let's look at what our military could do. So how could you beat the Vesps? Don't run. Like we mentioned earlier, jumping into your noisy car to try to make it out of the city when there is sheer chaos, honking traffic, looters, and people screaming in the streets is probably not a good idea. If you've watched my other videos, you'd know that when the apocalypse begins, you're most likely going to die in a car accident. Dad, watch out! 
Sure, if you have a Tesla, you may be able to use other people as a distraction to make it out of the city where you can then find a nice old couple willing to share their farmhouse with you, but that's a huge risk. And besides, making it out of the city doesn't really help in this situation. The Vesps are everywhere, and sure, they have a hard time surviving in winter conditions, but so do humans without all of our first world resources. Shelter in place. This is a good move because your average house provides decent sound insulation and contains a lot of food and supplies. If you have babies, smokers, dogs, or just bad allergies, it's far better to stay inside and use mattresses, blankets, or paper mache to soundproof your house and keep them there. Cover, board, and insulate your windows and doors. This will prevent vesps or crazies from hearing you and smashing their way in, or from throwing phone bombs through your windows. Find or make weapons. You can't expect that you can just chill in your house scrolling through reddit without any problems. You need to get prepared to fight people or vesps. The problem is that any weapon you make needs to be quieter than 30 decibels when used which is the sound of a whisper from a few feet away. Anything above that and you're gonna become VESP droppings. If you do have a firearm, could you suppress it enough with an oil can, a pillow, or a potato? Yes, a potato. We have a potato on the end, my 22. Not really. Subsonic rounds with homemade suppressors still produce around 90 to 100 decibels. The grandma coughing produced around 80 to 90 decibels, and she just about got everyone killed. Unless you have an extremely quiet firearm shooting subsonic ammo with a high-end suppressor, it's probably too dangerous. It's also worth mentioning that most of the time, you can get away with one quick, quiet sound, as the first noise just gets their attention. Once they are at attention though, the second sound they hear, they can pinpoint and attack. Breaking a twig might not get you killed, but repeatedly coughing will. If you don't have a firearm, what weapons could you make at home? You can make a surprisingly effective bow with a little handiwork and some PVC pipe. that has enough power to take down small animals, or vesps in this case. You can make a blowgun that can be lethal to the thin-skinned vesps with a long tube and nails. Dip the darts and feces to cause some deadly infections. Easily penetrate into wooden posts without even trying. They'll also stick into tree trunks or completely abuse the side of a wooden deck. I was able to hit some targets from over 100 feet away, and if I missed, the darts just sailed right into the concrete wall behind it, which actually blows my mind completely. Create a spear by sharpening an end of a wooden pole. I'd avoid using this on vesps, but this is an easy weapon to use and can be given to children to defend themselves. You'll have food for months in your house, which should buy you enough time for the military to fight them back. And if the military hasn't shown up after months, well, it looks like you're on your own. With food running out and the military nowhere to be found, you'll have to scavenge. The problem is, raiding houses or stores is too dangerous. You could be seen and targeted by looters. Someone might be defending the home you're raiding, and you could easily make too much noise trying to crowbar into someone's home by knocking a lamp over once inside, or by stepping on a soda can someone left on the floor. If you can't get food from houses or stores, where do you get food? Well, vesps do have meat on them. It's gross, but I mean, meat is meat. As far as how to hunt vesps, here is how I suggest doing it. Using rocks, lure some into the open in your backyard. Once you get one that's by itself, kill it with an arrow. Sneakily grab the dead vesp and cook it over a wood fireplace. If you have to go scavenging for medical supplies in an emergency, bring your weapons, some makeshift diversions, and if possible, use walkie-talkies with headphones to communicate with others in your party. Makeshift diversions can be fireworks, wind-up alarms, bells, or anything that makes sound and is throwable. If you get noticed by vesps, these will give you a chance to escape. If you get confronted by crazies, you can also use these as sound bombs to attract vesps to them while you escape. 
after you finish a scavenging run, don't just return home in a straight line. You could end up leading crazies right back to home base. Take unpredictable paths back. Watch your six, set traps, and make sure that nobody is following you before you go home. How could the military beat the Vesps? One of the cheaper, faster, and easier methods would be to get tank squadrons to drive around town. The Vesps will land on the tanks and try to claw at them with no success, as is standard operating procedure for tanks when boarded by enemy infantry. Each tank will rake its partner tanks with machine gun fire, killing all the Vesps. A less blunt method would be to use shielded directed energy weapons mounted on APCs to patrol towns and burn up VASPs with precision and minimal collateral damage. These weapons are designed to destroy swarms of enemy drones, so I think it's quite fitting for this situation. And once the area is clear, load up the APCs with survivors and head back to base. We can also use their strength, which is their hearing, against them. Sonic weapons like the long-range acoustic device can produce incredibly powerful sound waves. While the LRAD is supposedly only able to produce 162 decibels, if they could crank it up to 180 decibels, then you could disorient them and cause their lungs and other organs to pop like balloons. I suspect the Vesps won't be attracted to the sounds produced by this weapon. The best for last, a killdozer pulling a wood chipper. I talked about the wood chipper in my video on how to beat the monsters in a quiet place, and it looks like it worked quite well in this movie. Now these methods help us kill the bulk of them, but they still can reproduce, so ultimately we'll have to find some way of completely eradicating them. If you have any ideas, let me know. That's how I would try to beat the Vesps in the movie The Silence. Do you agree or disagree with my methods? How would you beat the Vesps? Let me know in the comments. If you like these videos and want to see more, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.